Hello, everyone. Welcome to another week's episode of Reconnect the Dots, brought to you by Abraman. Once again, I want to empower and help you to become the best version of yourself through this podcast, and I hope it benefits you. So, take a listen to this week's episode and let me know what you think. Welcome, Welcome to Reconnect to the Dark Podcast, and uh, thank you for accepting to um, be my guest on the show. Uh, it's actually the first episode on uh, the health and wellness segment, and I'm be my first guest for this segment actually on the show. So um, I'm going to briefly talk about you know um, uh, a synopsis about you, and then you'll be able to tell a little more about yourself, you know. Uh, Afterwards, so um, Dr. Falaka is uh, she's an infectious disease physician, and um, she will be educating us on the impacts of long-term stress on the body, which is actually the topic we're going to be discussing today on the show. And um, so, I will now delve into the um, uh, topic for the day. So, but before then, um, Dr. Falaka, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So and. Um, Listeners can actually get to at least know um, about you. Um, thank you for having me and for inviting me to speak on your podcast. My name is Falake Lawal. It's my last name. And um, like you rightly mentioned, I'm an infectious disease physician. I um Nigerian by origin. Um, I don't know what else to say. I schooled in Nigeria. I did my medical school in Nigeria and um, I moved to the US to do my residency, which I did in Baltimore, Maryland. And then I did my infectious disease fellowship clinical training in Georgia. Um, yeah. So um, the topic for the day, honestly, it's, uh, it's about the impact of long time stress. And we all know there's a whole lot of chaos going on in the world. Specifically, America is also has also has its own, you know, different kind of issues. And of course, all of these different kind of issues trickle down to uh, things, of course, that actually affects a lot of people. And of course, you have people who are aware about things going on around them. You have people who are who do not even understand what is happening, but they just by just you know. They don't even know it is stress, you know, and the truth is, there's a whole bunch of things, you know, we never know. So what is stress, you know, and uh, if you can, please just, you know, um, educate us about what stress is all about and, um, you know, well, let's take it from here. Um, I, I would say, I mean, stress is kind of something we throw, throw around somewhat loosely. Um, okay. Definition can kind of be subjective, but generally, I think it's just a situation of um, it's a feeling because again, the, what constitutes stress for each person is different, and um, a myriad of things can be felt or be effect of stress. stress. So it's basically it's kind of it's a feeling where you have like physical or emotional tension right. or an overdrive. Hmm. of your systems either biological psychological also we can also call it somewhere where you have an imbalance right. of you know your emotional psychological or um physiological slash biochemical um feeling or state right. so it's yeah okay so so how then do we how then do we align this okay Let's let's talk about what is going on right now. There's a there's an election palaver. There's so much going on at work. There's so much going on with with our lives individually, either work and all that. There's pandemic, right? Which of course I mean we're not talking about pandemic anyways, but of course I just want to be uh, specific and you know just put actually put everything into perspective as to what could actually be leading to stress. So if if an individual is actually going through stress. How does an individual actually know if she's actually going through stress? 
Okay, so if you can, you know, help, you know, maybe explain on that, that aspect. I, like I said, you know, it's first of all, you know, the feeling of stress is somewhat subjective. However, I would say that for a person is you, each person definitely would know their normal self and their normal state. And then it's a matter of being attentive to yourself and knowing that you're feeling out of sorts, um, uneasy, persistently, or you have an high intensity of either a feeling um either in your mind or in your body because a, a lot of times you know it, it manifests as either for some people either tiredness headache um anxiety palpitations so it's a matter of just knowing when your body is acting or manifesting things that it doesn't usually do mm -hmm. and it's doing that persistently or in very high intensity over a short period of time. Period of time. Okay. So, 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 like those three things which you mentioned now could be the symptom of stress, right? So it means your body perhaps is actually, you know, um, you know, reacting to something which you obviously feel in your own body that this is not normal, right? Mm -hmm. Perhaps those, those are the kind of symptoms and all that. So, how then did you, you know, manage those stress? And at what point? At what point do you um, either raise an alarm or, you know, to either your your doctor or any kind of healthcare professional around you to say, well, I'm going through this X, Y, Z and all that. I don't really know what's going on. So do I, is this something which, which an individual can actually manage on their own or they need to perhaps seek, you know, a proper, um, 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 healthcare consultation. It actually, depending on the manifestation that a person is having, okay. one, and obviously what the triggers are, would require maybe something that you need to take care of by yourself or seek, you know, expert help depending on what's going on. And, um, Identifying, you know, you, once you identify that something is wrong with me, I'm having this persistent headache. Again, I cannot overemphasize how this is actually very personal and it just requires personal attentiveness to oneself. For me personally, for instance, like when I have a headache, a headache is not something I usually get. I just, and I, I wonder like, okay, why am I having a headache? And I try to figure out what has happened over the course of the last few hours or in the day and then I figure out what has happened or maybe something has been persistently happening the past couple of days and then I I'm telling myself okay I need to you know I need to make changes or I need to add something more relaxing or something more calming if it's a stress you can't avoid for instance if you have an exam and you really need to study I mean you can't say well I'm going to come back on my study hours yeah. <laughs> it would now be okay i really need to study but what else can i do right. to help me feel relaxed more relaxed in the time so do you want to go for a quick massage do you right. want to take a nice shower do you want to take a walk or rather than spending the time you're not studying chatting or watching tv do i want to sleep an extra hour and things like that so some of these things are things that you can manage on your own or does someone want to say okay you know what I know I, we have a deadline at work, maybe we have this project that's coming up, but I'm going to take 10 minutes to meditate just to focus on my breathing before I go to work or in between on my lunch break, I'm going to take a walk. Some of these things help. Sometimes it's as, it's, it can, as simple as getting a massage can help and it doesn't even have to be a whole body massage. massage. Or people who are into, um, uh what well, I, I can't remember the word they call them but, but for people who are into things like um massage and right, kind right. of yeah, like muscle yeah. therapy kind muscle of therapy technology kind of thing. yes yes they you know they know some pain points i have a friend who she would just hold your hand and massage your hand and you would feel that relaxation all over your body so sometimes it's as easy as a temple rub it's as easy as a foot massage or a hand massage and a lot of times 
you know, things really get bad where if you're having like psychological manifestation where mm. maybe you're having a lot of palpitations, you really can't sleep, you might need to see a psychologist, you know, a therapist to be able to talk through because a lot of times some people cannot even figure out what the stress is and it takes, it takes narrating your experience to somebody else right. and then they help you peel apart what is going on like okay have you considered that this may be this because sometimes you just you're so wrapped up in everything that you can't see and some people can and there are times where the manifestation of the stress may be something that requires medical attention so mm-hmm. someone might say oh i've been working a lot i'm having this headache or um, my heart is beating fast and I can't, there's nothing I'm doing that's helping it. And then you get to the doctor and they tell you your blood pressure is through the roof. Obviously at that point, they could say, are you able to slow down? Can we try lifestyle modifications? But honestly, if your blood pressure is not controlled, you're still going to be having those. So you might need to be placed on medication or you really cannot sleep. Hmm. Getting sleep aid is not necessarily advisable for like long term. But for a short period of time, you might just need something to help you break that cycle. Right. Because yeah. stress itself and its manifestation is actually a vicious cycle where it's funny how, you know, the thing that starts it, just once it starts, sometimes it's just difficult to break that cycle where things just keep going on and on and on. And it takes some a major intervention like intervention. medication or just to be able to break the cycle. Right. So, okay. So, so, so can, can stress lead to depression? Yes. Okay. So, so in that case, so what's the, what's the, what is depression? What is stress? Like in the context of what you've just explained now, because the reason I'm asking that question, I just want to, I'm asking that follow up question for, for listeners out there who perhaps sometimes, you know, kind of misconcepts or kind of mix it up. They probably are not able to figure out what the exact stress they're going through and thinking, well, maybe maybe it's actually not even the stress they're going through and maybe they don't even have any stress. Maybe it's just depression or something. It could have been something else. So I, I just wanted you to, to, to speak to that, to that demography of people who perhaps are actually struggling between, you know, uh, stress and depression perhaps so at the end of the day they're able to probably understand well this is actually you know is that is either interlinked or actually stress can probably even lead to depression yeah so remember in the beginning we said that stress is basically your body your the the feeling of stress right. is your body reacting correct to things that are over overpowering it or making it work too much and of course stress itself as a thing or as a phenomenon is something that's putting pressure on your systems physical biological psychological emotional right yeah so you have you have something we call a stressor an event um an encounter or incident that is either one time or repeated and then you have the feeling and the effect on the body and then you have subsequent outcomes now the way stress can manifest in some people is anxiety okay. where depending on the cause right so for someone who is in a high performing job for someone who has an exam for someone who um works a lot of hours they are tired all the time you know they feel very tired but they really cannot stop it's it's that you have that anxiety and sometimes anxiety is basically where you are heightened awareness and anxiety sometimes when you cannot rein it in when you cannot tell yourself okay i i got this i can do this Mm -hmm. like for instance someone who is saying oh I have this deadline at work or i have this deadline at school and you're you're hyperventilating like oh my God, I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. If I do it, I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to make a mistake. I'm going to fail. That leads to, because it's like you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. And then you get to a point where you're just like, okay, I think I'm just a failure. I think I'm going to, you know, I think I'm, 
I'm a failure. So the, it, it leads to a point. There's a threshold a person gets to where it kind of leads to hopelessness. Hopelessness. And it's funny because I remember yeah. probably a couple of years ago, I'm a doctor, but I would see people, they'll be like anxiety and depression. And in my head, I'm like, how can you have anxiety and depression together? <laughs> Naive. <laughs> till I actually experienced it. You know, oh, wow. I, yes, I was, I was about to graduate and i was thinking of my possible career options for um, personal and family reasons right and i was thinking about exploring a path that was not necessary that was not traditional because as a doctor you know you graduate from your yes, training yes. you're supposed to go and get a clinical job where you're absolutely working. yeah yes yes and i was looking for something different and i was looking at all the job requirements and they were like five years of clinical management I was like, how do I explain to these people that I've been managing residents, I've been managing, you know, medical students for like five years, but it's not in this field. And I was just, I was just hyper and extra and I was crying like, oh my God, all this education I have, all this work experience I have, it does, it's not preparing me for any other thing other than this traditional path of medicine. And I just overwhelmed myself. I got overwhelmed with that feeling of, I can't do this. I can't do that. I can't go into this field. I, you know, and I, and I just had a moment where I just felt sad. It was just sad. like, I was, I was extra in one minute and the next minute I felt sad. And I was like, why am I feeling sad? Right. And for me personally, I have a, a strong self-reflective traits. So when I'm feeling something, I query it and I, and I analyze it. So I was like, why? And I realized, it's because I feel like there's nothing I can do Dude. about this thing. So it, it took me to a point of hopelessness. Right. And that's where the depression sets in because so now you're anxious about all the things you want, but you can't get all the things you want, but you can't do, or you don't have the opportunity and avenue to, and then you cross that threshold of hopelessness where, well, I'm not going to be successful. Well, I'm not going to make money. Well, money, <laughs> exactly. And once you get to that point and you now sit in that and that now becomes, so now you're not, you're no longer anxious about, can I, can I, can I, I can't, I can't. It's just, you have, it's now a resignation mm. of, oh, me, I think cannot, not... I think cannot. And even though there's still a part of you that's yearning that would really like for that thing, there is a bigger part of you that has accepted it. So you want it, but you know, oh, I can't get it. So I'm just going to feel sad. Well, not that I'm going to feel sad it's because sad. it's not a choice, Sorry. but it's something that's happening and, and you're sitting that. So that's one way that stress can cause, can lead to depression. Depression. Oh, Other way okay. is just looking at the biochemical part of it is depending on the type of stress you're having again, Right. Your body is adjust. It's they call it maladjustment. Your body is secreting different types of hormones. hormones. There's the hypothalamic pituitary pathway, and all of these hormones. There is the you know you're secreting things like cortisol. You're secreting things like um, adrenaline, adrenaline and different levels of these hormones. They affect. They move in different ways. For instance, in adrenaline, the pathway, there's dopamine. Dopamine, you know, works in it, some ways mm -hmm. in the brain. And dopamine right. is also, you know, the hormone that has something to do with Parkinson's and things like that. So right. because your hormonal system is also out of, out of sorts, it's not right. normal, it changes the biochemical pattern of your brain. Of the, of the brain. And then it messes yes. up. Yes, and then it just changes everything. So you, the way you, you would not react normally to a regular trigger. You would react in a different way. Right. And your body also, you know, so you are reacting to something in a way that you shouldn't react normally. You are probably eliciting a different response and your body takes it in again. And everything is just, you know, everything is just once there is one comma, comma, comma. Everything just leads to a so big error. Another, another thing, another thing leads to something else. Okay. Yes. Okay. So it cascades. So so can you can you help me explain this feeling when you're having a feeling of being trapped in your home mm -hmm. as a result of stress what do you do what do i do or what should somebody do no what should somebody do so i'm asking that question so that you know you know for i mean see you know you, you've said a lot of things right and um and, and you know of course like just like you said like 
there is there is a hormonal imbalance and everybody has the different body system and the way it reacts it reacts differently you see so and i'm asking that question because i know and i'm very sure that we will have a whole lot of people out there whether young or old this is very very important you know um message or or topic which needs to probably you know um showcase some sense of awareness and as to how they can actually learn some you know one or two things to you know to, to unravel whatever stress they're actually going through you see but as i'm asking that person like if someone is having you know uh, a feeling of being trapped in themselves how then as a result of stress how do they manage that um multiple ways obviously okay but so for instance for someone who depending for some people different things work for different people for some people it's just about being able to physically relax for some people it's about being able to take a break so right. if it's your work take a break sometimes there are people especially in america in the united states there's a high percentage of people who do not use their paid time off absolutely oh a lot <laughs> because because they there is a there is kind of like a vacation shaming thing that goes on where you take a vacation and people are looking at you like of course and then of the you know employers or whoever it is managers try to guilt people into feeling like you are dispensable you know like oh yeah right. you come back and they've given your task to somebody else and you also and because a lot of things are linked to employment a lot of people are living paycheck to paycheck people have mortgages um your health insurance is linked to it it kind of makes that job makes that job kind of like a lifeline for a lot yeah. of people for a lot of people, which right. you know has shown but i think yeah. one is we need to normalize taking breaks daily breaks weekly breaks monthly mm. breaks annual vacations daily breaks like yes eight hours why don't you look not just a lunch break for instance and i can tell you doctors are really bad at this oh, like oh, yeah in terms of we don't take breaks they just go on and on and on and we on. just like... we just power through a lot of times we are eating even our lunch break is not a lunch break you are eating lunch as a resident and we're eating lunch and you are getting a lecture during that lunch break mm. wow. or as as an attending now i'm eating lunch and i'm eating lunch at my desk i'm eating lunch and i'm typing a note i'm eating lunch you know but now you know i'm i try my best like okay today i'm going to try to finish early or i'm going to finish this amount of work right. i will take a work or i will go and sit down i think yeah. it was two days ago I think it was two days ago where I, I discovered a garden because I was just I was just overwhelmed, you know, <laughs> with all this Nigerian stuff. And I was I was just telling myself, I like it, I just need to go outside. I just need to go out. Because I was okay. actually having palpitations. I was just like, I just need to go outside. And as I was walking, I looked to the right and I saw this garden, this place, and I just went there and I sat down and I sat down there for like 30, 45 minutes and I felt much better. So taking a break in between the day, during the day is something, even if it's 15 minutes, 15 just sit minutes. down. Right. Don't, don't talk to anybody, just sit down and breathe. In okay. that moment, have a moment where Absolutely. you don't owe anything to anyone, you don't right. owe anything. And I, and I try to do that for myself. Right. Let's normalize taking our vacations. You know, there's nothing wrong with going to a spa, don't feel guilty, you yeah. have something you have do something for yourself that helps you recharge that helps you feel relaxed that's one. right right okay. obviously there are some stressors that are kind of like insidious they happen it, it's not overwhelming in in a short period of time but it's persistent you know it's persistent and it's there those are the ones that okay you know that every day you're going to go to this work and this manager is going to give you a lot of work and you think right right but there are some stressors where you know for instance like i gave the example of i'm trying to search for a job and i'm looking at the job and in that moment or those kind of moments where you have an exam you have a deliverable at work you just for me what i started doing and i learned it also i saw it that kind of phenomenon used also in in multiple in multiple areas i was even in my class strategic strategic organization strategic development sorry um yeah. it's basically pausing 
and saying and asking why okay so i why am i stressed out because i feel like i don't have the qualifications for this job what is okay. but then shift the conversation what qualifications do i have right focus in in i remember in that class they called it focus on the bright spots on the bright spots is look at what you have first of all because you might just be reading it in the way it is because again you know a lot of these resume things is about packaging how do oh you, yeah how, absolutely how do you narrate how do you state what you've done you see someone who literally all they do mostly at work is get coffee for their bosses but they they will present it in such a way that you're like oh my god you're a great executive assistant right, right? so it's about what do i have so i try to shift the conversation to what do i have what have i done what is my track record all right how can i pivot okay even if what i have is completely unrelated to what i want no problem how can i get to that point and then i now make a plan in my email i have this phrase where i i put beginning with the end in mind mind so i look at where do i want to go and i start making a plan this how do i get to that point what do i need to get to that point and sometimes you know it's oh i'm going to school and i need twenty thousand dollars for my tuition okay you don't have the twenty thousand dollars now but why don't you make a plan right. don't just don't just dismiss it like i can never get to that school okay that's what right. needs you to write skinny or a personal statement write your yeah. personal statement right then look at okay how can i if i start saving up for the school what if I save up 2,000 or 1,000 every month? Not everybody mm-hmm. can afford that. Right. But you know, it's about making what are the possibilities and then you make a plan and you break it down. Of course, yeah. the plan again can be big and overwhelming, but you break it down into <sighs> tiny steps that you take. Absolutely. But really, it's, it's, a lot of it is in the mind. It's about like figuring out why you're stressed out and going like, cause sometimes some people be like, oh, I'm traveling or I'm going to this place alone. I don't know anybody or right. my friend is traveling my mom is mm-hmm. leaving me and you're like okay but has somebody left you before in the past yes did you die no <laughs> okay where they are going can you call them yes right. eh, okay why don't you try and call them you know you it's about like figuring out what are the alternatives alternatives it's, right it might be easier said than done but it's something that once you start it and you do it over and over it becomes such second nature absolutely so there's multiple ways to cope with stress first it's about figuring out what the stressor is figuring out what works for you a lot of these things is about self-discovery is knowing mm. who you what works for you two people can ex- experience the same stressors and manifest differently they can even manifest in the same way, mm. but what 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 gives them relief is going to be different. Right. So each person has to understand themselves. No. A massage, I work for somebody, a walk will work. There are some people who tell you they are stressed and they go and run. Me, tell me to go and run. Why? Please, 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 I don't want all that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would rather just sit. Me, I just like the outside. I call it the outside. Outside. Let me just Absolutely. Sit down. Let me just sit down and have a period where I owe nothing to nobody. Right. That is the best. Yes, that is the best thing that works for me personally is nobody can, as in this period though, hmm, except even if, uh, except I'm the one that will save your life. Sha. And that life, I can see my name written on it, which is not possible. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. And honestly, you know, you just nailed it earlier because the truth is all about beginning with the hand in mind. And and again, I just had to that. It's not just beginning with the hand in mind, but also like you need to, one has to also um, feed your focus and, you know, just starve your distractions. I mean, honestly, for me, I, I will cite my, my, myself as an example, like, um, you know, it's it's been a remote work since it's been like maybe like seven months or going to eight months now so i know that at every point in time of course it's there's an emotional part there's a health part there's so many other things which you get overwhelmed you get phone calls right and left back and forth emails you need to respond to these you need to respond to that the truth is all of those things are kind of overwhelming and it can actually of course like stress you out so what did i do 
I and I, and I and I want you to I want you to tell me if I'm actually if I'm actually on the right path. <laughs> As to what I just came up with. I came up with I came up with this thing. So I I called it routine. So aside from my my task for uh my nine to five every day of the week, I came up with an additional routine because and that additional routine. I align it to me working from home because I call the work from home my personal workspace and I need to make it work for me. See, I, I, I put behind me, you know, the, the notion of that I am working in the physical office. Working in the physical office, you might not even have time to actually even get up to want to go for a break or anything. Mm-hmm. But for me, the routine is, the truth is, I won't lie to you, sometimes one of my routines, I get on the on, on, on the PS4 uh, video game, I play soccer. I play soccer. It will be my lunch break, and I'm not sitting down on the computer for from morning to whatever hour I call for the day. No way. I take a walk. I go around. I change my, my, my workspace to make it easier because I know that Hey, if I sit down in one position, you like and, and again even go on like the the the, the border system when you sit down, you realize that your I don't know like the blood doesn't flow very well and then your you mm-hmm. like start to swell up or something like that. It means you're not moving around. You need to move. So that is what me I have done. Am I on track? That's that that's fine. Like I said, you know, again <laughs> is what works for you. Just like you have said, oh, going, taking a walk, making sure you get up and walk is very relaxing and helps you to cope well. Right. For me, I can be I can I can be in my house for three days straight and not touch my front door. And I am mm-hmm. perfectly fine. So yes. again, it's it's it really is about like knowing what works for you and just right. and and getting it and getting it so Absolutely. that if that works yes because blood flow blood flow is also good you know being just being active enough to move blood around that also that's something that has been shown to help and, and, and i know that study has also shown that um some folks actually go the yoga way or the yoga route to actually release stress and and all that mm-hmm. and, you know like you know, I think yoga is something which is organic and which was, which is actually, you know, pretty much synonymous with um, um, Asians, especially Indians, right? Mm-hmm. But is this something which is also, you know, medically accepted or what's the, is that, so what's the, um, the, how do I call it? So what, what's the what, what, medical acceptability and you know in, in actually in, you know that you know yoga so is a relaxation technique correct and so it helps relieve stress right so as long as it's it's a someone being able to just relax and mm-hmm. the process of relaxation obviously again even though it's it physical you are, you are doing something physical but it actually has a biochemical effect because okay. yes because that process of focusing it lowers your blood pressure it lowers your heart rate and the lowering of your heart rate really just doesn't happen by itself again it's the chemicals that are released by your body so doing that persistently your body gets in the habit of feeling relaxed right so yes um, there, there are benefits of yoga that, you know, there are some studies that have shown some benefits where they're like, oh, somebody, you know, putting people th- on through different stressors and mo- different types of relaxation techniques. And some studies have shown that yoga does have some benefits some in benefits. people okay. you, in, on some health on some health issues right, right. Okay. or health conditions. Okay. So I, I also want to ask this, and again, the reason I'm asking it is actually for the for the uh, for listeners who fall within the category of maybe like um, senior citizens, maybe like forty upward and all that. So like, um, of course, you know sometimes um, when when some people actually take medication for some 
you know, any type of thing, you know, going on with them. You know, there's always this period or there's always a point in time when you just get tired of taking that medication. Mm -hmm. the, taking the medication stresses you out. But the thing is, you need to take that medication. So I, I, I need you to actually talk about that in the sense that how does that, that person, no, it's true, honestly, it's true. See, this is, this is, this is gonna be very informative and, um, and educating for whoever finds his or herself in that kind of position or state of the mind. So, and it's, it's also gonna be researching, you know, evidence, you know, for, for that kind of person as well. So, see, medication is, is a is is a is a is a different thing to actually sorry sorry medication you know is a step to to actually solving you know a certain health issue okay now it's another different ball game to get tired and be overwhelmed as a result of that medication one is actually taking which obviously i still call it stress you're just stressed you're just tired like you know, I'm tired of taking this medication, that, 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 that. So how do you, how do you, how does one manage that? How does one actually, you know, you know, try to just stay calm and take a look, you know, just take this medication, that, 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 or, I mean, what, what, what do you recommend? What's your recommendation? You know, I, I just, I just, I just want to, you know, hear, and of course, for those who, listeners out there also will probably get to learn something out of that as well. So it's actually a a phenomenon right um there's something called uh pill, we call something pill burden but that usually is that is used to refer to um people who take a large number of medications so mm -hmm. there are people who are on like five pills six pills 12 pills <laughs> you know and they're tired yeah. um but of course there are people who um take one or maybe just two medicines and they, they get tired of taking it. Right. Honestly, it's um it's something that kind of just needs how would I put it? Kind of, almost like psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's basically would require the person just understanding the condition and understanding that to have a healthy outlook mm. so to to stay healthy this is needed right so right. it's it's about i would say for me for someone i would probably try to help the person focus on the benefits i understand it's stressful so for instance you go to work honestly i'm sure if they asked like 90 percent of people they say get the same amount of money and sit at home or we pay you 25 percent of that of what you get at work and you don't work there are people who would accept it because they're like i don't i don't want to work i i'm tired you know i just i just don't want to do anything or i want to do less right uh -huh. it's the same way where you now tell people you make someone understand that so you you want to buy a new car right, right. and so it means that you have to work or you have to pull an extra shift the same way you 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 wake up every day and you go to work to be able to pay your right. bills right you show up even though you're like yeah i could be doing something better i want to do something else but you still get up and show up so taking your medication is showing up for your health showing up for your health it's showing up you know and and I, I i i take care of hiv patients and one of my attendants taught me this like you tell your patients like you take this pill every day on a good day on a bad day on a rainy day on a sunny day on an anxious day it is make it a constant it, it's it's easier said than done because especially you know people who are relatively young and they kind of feel strapped you know like i can't live my life because no you, you you can't not live your life because you're taking a medicine you have to try to find a way to fit it in the mm. lifestyle is so it's trying not to look at it as this thing that's a burden but rather you use look at the medication as a facilitator as something that facilitates healthy lifestyle for you 
as something that adds value to your life because guess what if you don't take that medicine you're diabetic you don't take your medicines you don't do the things you're supposed to do well 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 give yourself a couple of years you're talking about nerve pain and then you will be begging for the medicine Medicine. right you're talking about wounds that won't heal and god forbid they have to cut off your leg or you're talking Mm. about blood so it's it's about understanding and sometimes a lot of times people actually don't even understand the conditions that they have and the impact of non-compliance so taking the medicine is not easy i am not going to lie to you i had my own physical my last physical was somewhere earlier this year and my doctor was like oh your cholesterol you know nigerians and uh, plantain Plantain. (laughs) more like Uh, yeah (laughs) and she was like yeah so your cholesterol i was like i'm not taking a medicine we're going to work on that lifestyle we'll cut down the oil (laughs) and i went home and i was like after a week or two i'm like oh shit I, I I have a new when I the next time I'm giving a patient education on lifestyle changes, like I'm gonna put some respect on that because mm. now I know that it's not easy. It is it's not, not easy not. at mm-hmm. all. Making mm-hmm. those changes, doing those things, it's not easy. It's but not. you have to look at it like, what do I want? I want to be able to get up and run. I want to not feel tired when I climb a flight of stairs. I want to not feel like my heart is literally going to bust out of my chest when I climb to the second floor, right? right. I want to be able to sleep and not feel like my body is going to fall apart or whatever fall it is that you're right. feeling. Right. And then it's like, this is what I need to do to get to that point. It's about creating a positive goal for goal yourself for and just working towards it. And that's, I mean, like I said, different things will work for different people. Which, but which, which pretty much, good. yeah, which pretty much actually, you know, um, explains everything. So at the end of the day, you just have to see it as a, you know, as a motivating factor that will help unless, you know, um, a healthy physical, you know, system for you or your body and all that. And uh, don't see it as a body. But again, you know, see, I, I grew up understanding this. And I'm going to ask you this question. Well, I, well, I wouldn't say it's a myth. It's not a myth, really. But I want to believe maybe it happens or it doesn't happen. And I think I've not really done like too much research on that. But again, so, so, <laughs> so some say that taking too much medication could actually destroy the lung. The lungs. Is that true? Is it true or false? That's number one. Now. Let me now put it this way. What is the <laughs> Dr. Malake? I'll tell you, you see, a lot of people, a lot of people have different things happening. Trust me. So, 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 so now let me now let me now put it like this in the second question, follow-up, is that is there a kind of a, is 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 there an impact or a side effect of taking too many medication, which is, you take it as prescribed, you're not taking overdose or anything, you're taking it as prescribed. Is there any kind of side effect that, you know, impacts any other organ of your body system, e.g. lungs? So, okay, where do I start answering this from? First of all, there is, except the medicine you are taking has been shown to cause lung damage okay i don't think that it would be right to say that taking too much medication causes lung disease nope that's not that's not true that's false that's not true now in fact if anybody if 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 anybody wants to even say something gets damaged maybe you even talk about too much medication damages your liver too much medications damages your kidneys i could i could say okay that needs a little more explanation but the lungs because and i and i use the liver and the kidney as a, as the point because they those are actually the two main organs main organ. yeah. that detoxify that excretes that remove medicines and the byproducts yeah correct 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 absolutely 
Absolutely. So obviously, yes, there are some medicines that yeah, you're taking them for a long. For instance, in fact, let me even say this because our people. Yeah, be specific. For instance, Thank you. taking um, uh, ibuprofen, Advil. I, I think ibuprofen is Advil. Ibuprofen, naproxen. Um, what's this thing that these people use for arthritis? Diclofenac. Mm. In Nigeria, they will say felvin. Uh, Indometacin. They use it for jo- They tell you they are using it for romanticism. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, like this, some of these, you know, NSAIDs that they use for arthritis. Right. NSAID. Taking too much NSAIDs can cause kidney problem. Problem. That as in, it's it's a side effect because there's a way it works that it basically too much of it or taking it for too long narrows the blood vessels that go to the kidneys so it's basically like choking your kidneys for a long right. time right um so that's one uh and there's a bunch of other things but it, again it's about whatever medication you are taking of course there are some idiosyncratic reactions right. and yeah. there are some rare reactions right. but everybody has this right and please one, I get this. I get. I feel disappointed when you know I'm talking to people and they're like, "Yeah, they said, hey, they said we are just. They said this is what is going on. What did they give you? Hey, I don't know. They should have said that, or they should have just gave this medication." And I'm just like, "This is your health. This is something that if anything goes wrong like this, your life may be on the line, and you don't right. know what they're telling you. So please, right. people who are listening, please." You have a right. It is your body. It body. is your health. And you should know about these things. If your doctor is not explaining, well, you tell them, please, I need you to explain. Again. If the person, because again, we're, we're, we're different with our skill of explaining things to people. There are doctors Absolutely. who, who will explain things to people and I'm, and I'm looking like, they're yeah, explaining it like they're talking to a medical person. Person. Correct. So, but tell them to give you if you cannot, if you cannot understand the way, if they cannot say it in a way you can really understand, tell them and to give you pamphlet, education pamphlet. material to break it down for you. Yes, to understand. because they are standardized educational materials and information packets that break it down into lay, lay English. Of course, there is Google. Don't go and I mean I wouldn't say don't go and Google your symptoms, but if they give you a diagnosis, you can mm-hmm. go and Google. If they tell you your cholesterol is high, you can go and Google because this Absolutely. Thing can educate yourself. Then find a professional if you have a friend, a family friend, and you want to talk to somebody who can explain it to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we should be conversant with our diagnosis, whatever it is, whatever medications we are taking, mm-hmm. understand the side effects and the effects of the medicine and also interactions especially for people who take a lot of medicines there are some medicines that cross react one Mm. medicine can make another medicine work too much one medicine can make another medicine work too little medicine Medicine. yes (laughs) because even us like that's why you know electronic yeah it will flag it like oh this patient is on a blood thinner and you want to give them this thing it's going to make it's your body is going to excrete it too fast, which means oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh all yes, all those kind of things. So, oh, yes. so it really is about understanding sure. what you're taking and how sure. your body reacts to it. Because again, absolutely, you, you can give twins the same medicine and their body will just oh yeah. It's, I mean, it's just yeah. just like something I learned in my clinical research class about um, like you know when you have when you want to have a trial on a subject. So you need to like like make sure you double check on if they're actually taking some type of medication. Are they pre- like if, if, if any they pregnant or like they, they they really need to just you know you know speak up on whatever it is medication they're taking so that yes whoever is actually going to start the trial on them will know what and what you know to do and all that and even supplements and herbs thank you i was going to ask that those are the two questions i was going to ask before we even have... sup they are very very I, I they are very they are very very important supplements and herbs, and herbs. also make a whole lot of difference Ooh, okay for instance there's this um there's this uh is it a root or a tree it's called saint john's worth and yes, St. John's Worth. 
and it, some people use it for depression you know they would use it for all sorts but it actually has interaction with some other medicines mm. right so that's that's one there's uh, there's there's some other things where you know people say they are using ginkgo biloba people are, would say they are using all sorts of things so what tell your doctor if you are using any supplements i will wow. give you an example sometimes it's not even interacting again it's just expert no experimentation i was when i was doing my residency there was this nurse you know chatting and everything and we're talking about hair and skin and all. she was like oh that she uses high dose vitamin b6 and she's been using it for years and her hair and her nails have been growing i said let me to go and try it now <laughs> why not <laughs> and i started using it oh wow and then i was i was fine and then i started having really bad acne acne painful pain when i say painful and i didn't know what was happening and i kept using it it was like cuz when you take a normal multivitamin capsule maybe the vitamin b6 that's in there is maybe like 100 she 100 microgram or something i was using like 3000 microgram oh, wow one day god the god that i serve that wanted to save me mm. from the calamity i put myself inside i was just i stumbled on some things some youtube video beauty youtube video i don't i don't even know how i got there I just and i stumbled on it and she was like yes you know um something something about if you're taking care of your skin something something doesn't i just know what you're taking something 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 supplement you know like vitamin d that vitamin b6 don't take too much of it because in some people it can cause acne because it does something something to and i was just like subhanallah lazy mm. in me in fact i still have the remaining vitamin b6 in my house i'm sure it has expired i just stopped it. i was like wow so wow. imagine i wasn't i was taking a supplement thank god i wasn't taking some other medication in some other person right. it could have uh, it, it had a it had a visible negative reaction on me so imagine if i didn't stumble on that i would go to a doctor they will give me one medicine they'll give me this they'll give me that meanwhile the underlying problem is i was i was i was causing an imbalance imbalance correct because i was using too much of something right so in a nutshell so in as much as supplements is actually really good for the body but it is not should i say it is not all the supplement that is actually you know okay for everyone due to reaction or whatever of the body system is that what you're i saying? think i would say excessive because what i was using was i was using like 1000 1000 percent okay is what excessive. i was using so, so I, excessive, think, I think you know mm -hmm. excessive yeah. excessive consumption of supplements you know can actually cause some some other kind of reactions to the body system. yes so, so it means one has to just you know just take as as little as possible you don't have to take too much yep you know okay so but but supplement is very good for the body yeah please you were you were going to say you were going to you know finish off something uh so you were saying yeah so it's basically that. no it's just it's okay. just about you know and people who take agbo agbo okay organic but i mean i always um, go, agbo they don't you don't see. It doesn't have dose. I would not say a blanket no to it. Right. But I, I wouldn't also strongly suggest it. I mean, I'm a doctor, obviously. Oh yeah. Um. But but I also know that there's a place there's a place for unprocessed botanics. That's what I would use it. Correct. You know, because because natural formulations of things, you know, it's like saying a wedogo yarrow that they use for malaria in, mm -hmm. in you know, back home. Yeah. I believe that God created these things and there's a natural formulation of it that there's something in that leaf more than just that coin in that balances that Absolutely. balances it out. Absolutely. However, you know, there are also some mixture. Mixture. Fine. Yeah, so all those things, man. and all those all things, those things man. they're not putting all sorts of, and, I, and at that point you i i really cannot say but there, there's some that you can easily say oh um this this and this because 
I remember someone was telling me, a family friend, that there's, there's someone in Nigeria, a person studied botany and kind of runs like a um, shop, a botanical, you know, herb, herb shop or something like that. And the person is able to help you formulate based on what you need. I haven't been there. But for me personally, I think I was, even, even though I'm a doctor, mm-hmm. I still see myself as a natural path where for whatever it is that I need to take care of, what right. is the most natural way, first of all? First of all, right. I look at what's the most natural thing I can do before I now start looking at medication. Right, right. Have a doctor, But I'm not saying don't go to your doctor. I still right, to right. So, so Dr. Fahakin, so before, before we come to an end of this um, show, uh, what message do you have for those who are, you know, perhaps struggling through stress and not being able to figure it out and those who are taking medication i know you've said a lot of things and all just to, just like kind of a you know uh, a kind of a the last motivational message just for them to know okay look you have to do these and all that stress okay, yes. i think i would just first is like you're not alone everybody goes through it it's not normal but everybody has some form of stress and i think it's good to find your people that you know you can talk things through with someone who have someone who the moment they hear your voice they know that something is wrong and you're able to let it out Mm. um find find what it is that are your stressors do your best possible to remove them or Mm. minimize them figure out how you can do that and there are some things that unfortunately is difficult like if you live in lagos and mm. you live in Agba, Ajangbade, and you're working yeah. in vi uh, uh, and you cannot uh, afford uh, uh, you cannot afford to rent house in vi uh, or obviously yeah. you may not even be able to afford to rent house in surulere or ibute meta right Absolutely. and somehow you shall have to sit in that three hour traffic look for what All are right. the ways what are the other things you can do to 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 balance it out so yeah. that traffic when you're sitting in that traffic do you want to listen to like relaxing sounds do you um, want to see okay let me save a little more money rather than entering bus that will sit on paco maybe i should enter a smaller car that has better cushion seats because some of sometimes it's just this little right. thing so even if you cannot remove the stressors how do you now strike how do you balance out in terms of right. doing things that help you relax um and I, and I think that's what I would say for stressing. And people really should pay attention to their health because chronic stress, it actually, it, it, it causes a lot of problems. It's not just about, oh, I'm not feeling well, or I'm feeling tense, or I'm having a headache. It actually has long-term effects on people. Right, in right. heart disease, hypertension. You know, in Africa, we talk about people having low birth weight. In America, they talk about black women having low birth weight. And a lot of it, there are studies that have li- mm. linked chronic stress to these kind of things, preterm labor, small babies, things like that. So please pay attention right. to your health. Please right. do your wellness checks. Absolutely. Wellness check is usually 100% covered by insurance for those who live in the U.S., Please do your wellness checks at the very, very least. Do your wellness check. And don't say, oh, well, it's when I go to the doctor, they will now find some things. Better they find it when it's going to cost you $20 to fix than when they find something that will cost you $2,000 or $20,000 to fix. So please let's pay attention to our health. Um, And what was the other thing you asked for? In terms of people using medication. Yeah, medication, yes. Honestly, just see, find, find, put a positive spin on it like i said see it as the key to a better life see it as the key to to the as a key or a vehicle to that goal that you want to you know that hey i can go on a vacation if i don't have a stroke and this thing is going to prevent me from having a stroke right i can go on i can go on a vacation or i can relax when um i'm not feeling this so i'm not feeling that so that's that's what i would say Thank you so much, Dr. Falaki, for your time and attention. Honestly, this is uh, this has been very, very uh, interesting, um, you know, conversation about health because the truth is, health is wealth. If you're not healthy, you know, we're just 
they're just like uh, miles and miles and miles away from you know from being wealthy you know so again uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and i really 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 do appreciate you for, you know for taking out your time and um i trust me i we're gonna bring you back on the show <laughs> for subsequent episodes you know on on health and wellness because the truth is health and wellness is is it's very very broad so there's a whole bunch of different things and all that so um thank you so much and um listeners out there you have heard dr falako what she had said please and please and please you know just pay attention to yourself manage your stress as much as you can if need be if you know you're not in control seek and or call you know your your doctor and for med kind of medication, just always make sure that you make sure that your medication, whatever medication you're taking, you know, it's it's a it's a vehicle to actually, you know, helping you to be to become healthy. Thank you so much again, and um, I hope to bring you back on the show next time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, and All right. uh, have a great day. Bye. Right, bye. Alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. You have just listened to the Reconnect and the Dot podcast with your host, Hebda Roman. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play. And thank you for listening and see you all next week. Bye-bye.